Hello everybody, it's Claire here from Sewing by Claire and today we're going to be making a pattern from out of the Meadow Sweet pattern booklet so make sure you can't get a light on it and these are the um, patterns that are for the bigger friends which is Flora which is the bigger version of Luna Lapin and also for Bramble Bear which is the bigger version of Eric the Polar Bear um, and they've, there's this pattern booklet that I've done another video on where you have a little look through, but there's eight different garments in this book that you can make. I have already made this dress here, which is the Meadow Sweet dress, which is on Hamish just at the top, just here at the moment, because I haven't got a bramble yet. My bouquet is on order for that. So at the time of filming this, which is May 2023, then I've still got to make my bramble. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to continue on with the pattern. And the next one that I want to make is this one here, which is on the back cover hold it that way and you should be able to see which is this lovely pinafore now it's done here in linen i'm going to use a different fabric for mine but the um the, all the stages will all be the same um, there's another picture inside here of how that looks um, either with two different kinds of blouse and I'm actually going to be making this blouse as well in the future but because I've heard that sometimes the underarm seams here can be a little bit tight and because the underarm seams on my meadow sweet um, old school room dress which is the one that I've made on Hamish at the top there and you'll find that on my channel feels a little bit as if it, it sort of fits him perfectly in terms of width but um, obviously the length is a bit longer because Bramble's a bigger bear but I'm, I'm a bit concerned that there's not going to be enough um, width there for the um, for the character and so if I make this blouse in advance it might not fit so I'm going to make the dung the um pinafore dress now with you sorry for waffling but i just wanted to give you this background so i'm going to make the pinafore dress with you today now and then i'm then going to make bramble and then i'm going to make the blouse to follow after that so those videos will will be um upcoming but yeah we've got this little it's got lovely big patch pockets here it's got these straps that go around the back and then it's got a little way of cinching in the back of the pinafore as well and a nice deep hem at the bottom you'll need to purchase the meadow sweet pattern pack directly from cool crafting and they're at www.coolcrafting.co.uk and then you'll be able to buy the patterns in this book obviously i can't share those with you because it's not my content um, and cool crafting is the place to buy everything that's lunar lapping related all of your supplies all of your kits everything like that i'm not affiliated to lunar lapping in or sarah peel of cool crafting in in any way I'm just a lover of the clothing and of the characters and I enjoy helping others recreate those because at the moment there aren't many videos by Cool Crafting and certainly not for the clothes I don't think to help people make those so I'm making videos as I make them for myself in the hope that you will be able to have a go and feel confident enough to have a go and that you're not on your own making them and the feedback's been really good so so that's good anyway the reason that i'm able to bring these patterns to you is i need to say a really big thank you to linda Lowe, who is one of my subscribers and one of my facebook group members and linda reached out to me because she wanted to learn how to make the schoolroom dress here and also the pinafore dress and so she very kindly sponsored the purchase of the pattern pack through my coffee account um, and that then enabled me to purchase this so I really want to say a big thank you to Linda for your generosity and for your kindness and your support both on behalf of myself and on behalf of everybody who watches this video and who learns from this and enjoys watching the video because we're really grateful to you for for your interest and for for helping us to be able to to make this um, pattern today so thank you very much Linda um, I'm going to carry on. Just to let you know, the um, the video will be chaptered, which means you can jump ahead. So if you hover on the picture, you'll get some different chapters come up. So if there's only a certain area you struggled with when you were trying to make your pinafore dress or you're interested in a certain area, you can always jump ahead. Um, I'll also pop back at the end and then show you and we'll have a look and see what we've made. But yeah, we'll go through the the this way the pinafore step by step and hopefully then you'll be able to create one of your very own so i'll just turn the camera down now and we'll get started okay so one of the first things i want to talk to you about is the cutting out layout because um if you buy a kit from cool crafting you'll have your linen in there already and that will all be fine but when we talk about cutting out fabrics and cutting out, uh, sorry, it'll be fine, as in you'll get enough and sufficient of the right shape and size to, to make your garment. But if you want to go freestyle a little bit, which is what I'm doing, um, all the stages and the construction is the same, but it's just that you then have some, you've got, probably got a different fabric. 
then you may not be able to follow the layout guide um, in this pattern booklet. Because if we have a look, this piece here, which is the front of the skirt, is actually cut on the fold, which is just here. And then this is fo following. So if we follow north to south, you know, a, a, a vertical on, our, on the fabric along that fold line just there. But if you have a look at this piece just here, this is actually the back of the pinafore dress and has actually been turned 90 degrees. So it's on its side. So I'm actually choosing a corduroy fabric for, for making my skirt um, pinafore dress. But I can't move my fabric this direction because all of the um, lines in the fabric, if I show you this bit here, this is what I'm making mine out of. So if you maybe look on this side, this is the wrong side, but I don't know if you can see there's like lines of a grain in the fabric. And as you might know through using corduroy anyway, then there's a, what's called a nap. So one way you smooth your hands down, it's lovely and smooth. And the other way the fabric kind of is resistant to your hand moving across it. But also you get these little what's called whales. They've got these little lines of like cord and, and, and fibres that are all going in a certain direction. It makes like a lined finish. So if if I was to cut out my main piece like this, which is what I've done, so that's the one up, and then this one here, when we actually sew it, we're going to be sewing it that way together. And what you'll notice then is that this part here will be those those lines for the corduroy will be going in the wrong direction because you'll have cut them like here and they'll be cutting they'll be going across this way as they will do along here and then you'll then be turning it that way and that's fine if it's the look that you're going for but I just wanted to point it out to you because it's just going to be really important to to notice that um, so if you're using yardage I would always say to keep your grain the same. So I would actually turn this piece up the other way and then I'd put these other pieces down to the side over here so that they don't sit on the top there, it's to the side. But you need a slightly longer piece of fabric than it says in the instructions if, if you do it my way, my way, um, and, and just to get that, that grain right. If you're using an all over linen, something like this, then the weave and the weft is pretty much the same and you're not going to see any difference. So on that kind of garment or this kind of fabric, you could use it either this pattern pieces this way or that or that way, horizontal or vertically, and it's not going to make so much difference to your finished garment. But just because I'm using the, um, the corduroy, then that really is really important to get it right. And if you were using something, say, like a velvet, um, you might be an advanced sewer and choose to use a velvet then again you'd want all of that nap to go in the right way so that when you smooth your hand down the garment everything's all going in the same direction anyway let's carry on shall we so the first thing you need to do is get your pattern pack and there's a big open sheet in the meadow suite pattern pack with all your patterns on find your pattern pieces and i always would advocate that you trace those off that way you only need to have one copy of your master copy you can trace it off and then you can make alterations to the patterns as you wish and as you go along. But you're going to need your front skirt here, which has got the cut on the fold sign side, which is this piece here. We've got our back skirt, which is cut in as two sections, and that's this piece just here. So put that over there. I've then cut my bodice front, which is this bit here, on the fold. So I fold that pattern piece in half and used a fold because I've got that space on my fabric. So yours is either going to look like mine is a half, but it's double inside, which is here. Or you can put it out like this and you just, you're going to need one for the bib and one for the for the lining. So again, it just de depends on what you're actually going to be using because it, you do need a lining fabric as well. Um, it doesn't actually say that in the in the section there, but because the other thing is that in the booklet for your pockets, because the pocket is the other thing, the pockets need a front and they need a lining as well. So although they've only got shown you with one pocket cut out, um, put on the piece there, actually you need two of those being cut out. So you're going to cut out two on the double thickness. But then you also need two in a lining and I'm using this clear, this um, plain creamy coloured lining and you need that for your lining fabric um, for the pockets. So, yeah, just be aware of that because it 
it, it talks about aligning but then um, you've not got it but then on the on here if you cut it out flat like this for the bib piece which is this piece here that I've got in half then you'll cut out two in one go anyway and that'll automatically give you a lining and a top one or you can do what I've done and folded it in half in order to use the fold of the fabric but then you will also need to cut out a lining and I've got that and I've got different colours because then you can actually see when I'm working on the lining and when I'm working on the top then the final piece you'll need is this piece just here which is the straps and you're just going to cut two of those and I've just done those in the same fabric as the corduroy. So get your pattern pieces together and then we'll have a look at our notches and then we'll have a look at, I don't think there's any um, tailor's tacks on here so that's all fine um, but we'll talk about tailor's tacks as well because that's a useful skill to know um, and then we'll get ready. So if you get your pattern pieces traced and cut out and we'll be ready to go. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is look for any notches. So we know we've got two on the side skirt just here. And notches are shown by a little dash into the side of the pattern just like this. And what that means is that that means that it's a match point for a, a, another pattern piece. And so what we're going to do here is we're just going to just do a little snip with the nose of our... Um, I use these snips here, but a little cut and you can use your scissors. But if you're using scissors as well, make sure that you don't try and make your snips like that with your with your blades right into your fabric. Just use the very nose of your of your scissors and just you're just doing a couple of millimeters into the fabric. Just so that when you come to look at that piece of fabric again in the future, you can see that you've got a little snip in there and that shows you that match point. So we've got two on the back skirt there and then we've got two here. Oh, the reason why we say not to have them your scissors right across is because it's very easy to try and make a little snip and either you get a nudge or you a bit enthusiastic and you cut and you go too far into your fabric and it goes past the seam allowance. So that's why you just use the very nose of your scissors or your snips. And we've got then two notches, one to mark the centre front and the centre bottom on these, um, this bib piece which I've now opened out. I, was, I cut it out on the fold if you remember but I've just opened it out now just to be able to put our little snips in and as you can see you can see those quite clearly on the on the fabric when you come to work with it. Um, we don't need anything else on the front of the skirt that's all fine and we don't need anything else either on the um, straps. The other thing that I've noticed is the thing that I keep doing and I did this on the pinafore dress as well for Bramble is that there's actually a shortened line if you're making this because Flora is um taller than Bramble. So Flora the bunny, who's the same as Luna Lapin but bigger, is taller than Bramble's legs. And so if you are making this outfit for Bramble, you actually need to shorten this. So let me just show you how to shorten the pattern. And the way that I do that is we've got a, a dotted line here for the shortened line. What I do then is take a pen or a pencil and a ruler and if we put the two inch mark on our pattern piece here doesn't sound the in oh yes so flora is taller than bramble so you might want to make the patterns five centimeters shorter for bramble by using the shortened line and that's where it's going to fit on bramble which is a nice length so if you wanted to do that I think I'm going to keep mine the full length but if you wanted to do that then you'd measure the two inch mark on your pattern and so the two inch piece on your ruler goes against the pattern piece and then just make a dash and then you can draw join those dashes together then with a line going all the way across your pattern piece because I've taken out my pins here just at the side so I can show you. So then what you would do is you would fold that on the shortened line first and make sure that that line's neat all the way across and straight. And then you would then fold it up until your folded line here matches with the line that you've just drawn. And you fold that over like this. Now you can either sellotape it if you're only ever going to make this pattern for Bramble. Or if, you're ever, if, you, if you want to, you can just put some pins through it, which is what I tend to do, just to hold it temporarily for me. And then I can use it interchangeably. But then when you put that down on your fabric, you can see that you've now um, exposed this. You're either cutting your piece out two inches smaller or like I've exposed this two inch piece here. And if I put my ruler on there, you'll see it's exactly the two inches 
that we needed it to be shorter. Because I've already cut this out and because it's my very favourite fabric in the whole world, I'm not going to trim this off. I'm going to make it floral length, but just know that if you want to, you can shorten it and that's how you would, you would shorten that pattern. The other thing that I've done is as well is I've made sure that the tops of my fabrics are all the same as well. So on all of these pattern pieces, I have made sure that the top is is in the north, if you like, and that the hem of everything is in the south because I've got my lovely um, corduroy fabric that I'm making my pinafore out of and that needs to all go the same way. If you're making yours out of linen or out of a different fabric, you may not have to worry about that. So I spoke earlier in the intro about having turned some of these pieces round and I'm just making sure that's right. With your straps, you want if you're making yours out of corduroy too, you want the pattern and the whales of the um, straps to go along the long long edge, the, the, the straight long straight edge of your um, straps and your fabric just so that you've got that going all the way down the length because when that goes over the shoulder that's the way that you're going to want it to be. Okay so the next thing that we're going to do now is have a look at our instructions see which parts that we're going to work with first. Oh no we've done our tacks haven't we? I know what I was going to do I was going to talk to you about Taylor's tacks wasn't I just quickly just before we know. So we've got two um, marks here for buttonhole placement on the top of the um pattern piece and so I like to use especially on a busy dark print like this one I like to use a tailor's tack to mark it so I've chosen a colour thread that isn't in my design so that that then will show up as being one of my placement lines and then with a tailor's tack I've got it's double thread and there's no knot at the bottom and it's just on a hand sewing needle and I will go in where the pattern where the start of the buttonhole placement is and I'll come out at the end of it and I'll leave a tail. I'm going to leave that about a couple of inches long and you'll see why in a minute. And then I'm going to make another stitch that's just parallel to that but just not through the same fibres. And then I'm going to leave make a loop with that thread and that loop's going to be about the same length as the tails I left. And then I'm going to snip off my working thread and I'm going to leave a long tail too. So you get, and then once you've done that, you then cut through the loop that you've made and you've got this, get this like tufty threads onto your pattern piece. Let's just do the other one. And you'll see in a minute why I left these so long. Because you might think, well, that's a waste of thread. You don't need to leave them quite that long. But let me show you. So two inches again, roughly, for our tails. And then again in for the next pattern placement and leave the tail. And you can adjust it if it's not quite right. And then take off your lead thread and your needle, put that way out of the way. And then when we take out the pin that's holding our pattern piece on in place, we then just need to be careful that when we're removing the pattern piece, the threads don't get caught. So just put your finger on your threads and just let ease those that pattern piece off. We can take that off completely actually now for a moment. And then what we need to do now is, so that's marked through, through to the other side. You can see it clearly on the other side. But we've got to separate these two pieces of fabric because we need these to be right sides together and they're not currently. So what you do then is you pull us apart your piece of fabric so that you make a bridge of the threads. And you've not got to pull it so far that you pull it all the way through, but you've got enough there to work with so you can have a, lift, a tuft on each side. And then when you've got your bridge of threads like I've got there, can you see those just there? Yep. Yeah. Then you're just going to snip through those. Careful not to pull on them because what you want to do is leave thread in the lining fabric and thread in your top fabric. And that then should hopefully stay in place whilst you're doing your stitching to then mark those buttonhole placements for you. So let's do the same again here. So I'm just going to pull those threads apart to make a bridge. Make sure I don't pull it all away across. And that's why you need to have enough of a length of a tail so that you can do this. And then I'm just going to cut through all of those threads just there. Okay, so that's our two identical pattern placement marks on our um, buttonholes. You don't need to do that otherwise, but it's a really good way of marking um, dots as well onto pattern pieces. Okay, that's all for marking our fabric and we're ready to get going. So let me just have a quick look at the instructions and um, we'll get started. Okay, so the first pattern piece we're going to be working with is our pockets. Let's take our pins out holding that pattern piece on and you'll remember me saying you need to cut out two for your top fabrics um top pockets so it says cut two in lining and two in fabric 
So here we've got two cut in our fabric, a left and a right, because they've got to fit on either sides of the skirt. And let me just snip through the end of this because it's been cut on a fold, just because that's where my fabric was. And then we've got two pocket linings here, a left and a right, that are going to go on the inside. Now, I didn't use the same fabric twice because corduroy can be quite thick. And by using a lining fabric, that will be thinner than using two pieces of the corduroy. And because we're going to be put sewing these pockets onto the skirt, I wanted it to be as, as um, neat and as le least bulky as possible for my machine. So the first thing that we're going to do is put our pockets down, face side, right sides together. And this lining fabric is interchangeable, so I don't need to worry too much about that. And the corduroy you'll find will hold on to that. But if you've got linen, that's fine. You could just do two sections of linen. And then we're going to sew down around this edge here. And we're also going to be sewing down this long edge just here and along the bottom. So we're actually going to leave this bit here open and this bit here open because they fit into the side seam and into the waist seam. So we just need to be aware of that. So I, if you want to with a Frixion pen, you can measure and mark on your quarter of an inch. And that sometimes that's useful if you're going round a corner because we want just quarter of an inch seam allowance on here. So you can mark it with a, this is a heat erasable pen or a chalk, you can do that if you want to and just draw your, draw your mark so it helps you go round that corner. Or you can just freeze, freestyle it if you want to and just use the edge of your presser foot in order to, to, to see you round. Whatever you're comfortable with is what you should go with. So let me just finish the markers. We're going to sew down here as well. And we're going to use a technique called pivoting when we go around that corner. And I'm going to show you how to do that. And again, here we're going to pivot at the bottom and then we'll sew around here as well. So half a centimetre is about a quarter of an inch. So as I say, down and around here, down here and across there. So I'm going to sew in a, oh, put my pattern piece away, I'm going to sew in a coordinating colour to the lining because that'll show nicely on our top fabric. So let me get my machine set up with the thread and I'll come right back to you and we'll get this sorted. Oh, put some pins in. The, the, the problem is the corduroy is holding on to my on my lining fabric quite nicely but yeah just pop some pins in just to help you hold that all together on both pieces so that you can sew those nice and neatly and they're not going to shift on you whilst you're trying to work with them okay let me go and get my thread and i'll be back okay so i've got my machine set up and ready to go i'm going to load up my first one i'm just going to move the heads of the um pins away. We're going to demonstrate this first corner first because that's got a nice pivot point on it at this bottom point and then we'll go on to the curved one because the curved one is a little bit more tricky. So just set up your machine so that you're going to be using your quarter of an inch seam allowance and the way that I do that with mine is I find my seam gauge which is here. I line up the edge of my seam gauge here with my needle and then I see where the edge of my presser foot falls on the actual measure itself. So that's closer to one centimetre at the moment. So I need to move my needle across to the right until I am comfortable that actually I've got that in the right place. It's not quite right in yet. Yeah, so that's 6.5 on mine. So now my edge of my presser foot is my measure for my seam allowance. I'm going to hold on to my thread so that we don't get a nest underneath. And you always have to hold on to your threads when you start a seam. Otherwise, that's going to, if you've, sometimes you have a machine that cuts the threads for you, then you can't because there's nothing to hold on to. But if you've got a traditional machine where you've got threads out the back, you need to hold on to those. I'm going to take a couple of steps, stitches forward and a couple of stitches back. And then we're going to just use the edge of the presser foot against the edge of the fabric to give our approximate quarter of an inch seam allowance, avoiding our pins. And then when we get to approximately a quarter of an inch away from the um, edge that we're going to then twist, we're going to put our needle down into our work. Now you can either use a but I've got a button on mine, or you can use your hand crank on the edge and we put the needle down into our work. What that means then is we can lift up our presser foot and we can then pivot our fabric around 
and it's not going to jump. Now, if I put this down, I can see I've got excess on the side of my presser foot. So I know I'm not quite there yet. So if I lift my presser foot back up again and then put it back into my, the work, just make sure I've not got too many, perhaps just need to go one more stitch and then I can go along and then I can now change direction with confidence and now stitch along for a quarter of an inch. Take your pins out if you need to. You don't sew over pins. And then I'm just going to reverse at the end there just to hold on to those stitches. Needle out of our work, find our snips, and cut those threads off and our starting threads off. So for our first seam on this pocket, we can see, hopefully you can see on there, you can see this, this thread following all the way down and then we've got a lovely crisp point at this point here where we had our needle in and we changed direction. When we're sewing round a curve, it's slightly different because our sewing machine can only sew in straight lines. So we have to change direction gradually in order to give us this curve. So we're going to put our fabric back in at this edge here and we're going to reverse and we're going to start until we start to go onto the curve, start stitching until we start to go onto the curve. So do that again. So needle in the work, start sewing, reverse. And then we're going to start. And I can see that I'm going to start and turn around the corner so I'm going to put my needle in my work again like I did before and then I'm now going to put the presser foot up but I'm literally just going to change direction almost I call it a smidge whatever word you use just the tiniest tiniest bit and then you're going to do a couple more stitches and sometimes you can just move your fabric gently but I know this curve here is going to be too severe that we're not going to be able to move all of our fabric without getting a bunch up like this. And we don't want all of this bunching up because that's not going to lie right. But you you see the difference now. So we move it, start to sew a little bit. And then I can see I'm going to start and come off my stitches. So leave my needle in my work, lift up my presser foot, and I'm just going to move the direction of my fabric just slightly and do just a couple of stitches. And then I'm going to lift my presser foot again, move it just slightly and do two stitches. And again, literally just a couple of stitches at a time. Whatever it takes to get round this corner nice and in a nice curved way. And again, I'm not going to straighten it up straight away. I'm going to again just do a couple of stitches as we come out of that curve before I then get onto the straight bit again. And then we're on to the straight again now, so I can just carry on. Take our pins out, we don't want to sew over those. And then we're just going to reverse at the end here again. So you do have to take your time, and um, you know, that, that was real time for stitching around that curve. If I put my threads away, you can just see now how lovely that curve is. And you wouldn't have known that ha that hadn't been sewn you know, on a curve, it's been sewn a couple of stitches at a time and you've just given that lovely, lovely smooth line. There's no, there's no points in there at all. It's going to sit nice and flat. So the next thing then we're going to do is obviously you'll need to replete it for your other pocket as well. But I'm going to show you what we're going to do next with this one. So this straight edge here doesn't need anything to do into it because that's all fine. Where you've got a point and a corner, if you try and turn this corner with all of that fabric, you're going to get a real bump in the corner. So what we do with corners is we take take it off, but you don't just take a 45 degree angle off. You take a bit wider than that. So I come in a little bit wider than 45. I'm snipping to just a couple of stitches away from my corner. And then I'm going to take off a bit of a wider stitch them 45 going up there. So can you see that's slightly bit more than 45 degrees that I've taken off. And this takes the bulk out of the corner. So that's just there. This one here will be fine as well. That'll just sit nice and flat. And you'll see that when we change, when we turn it through. And if you've not tried snipping your corners before, you've got two pockets. Snip one, but don't snip the other. Turn them round and have a feel and you'll then be able to see the difference for yourself. The same on this side here. Now, because this curve here has to lie flat, we've got to snip or do something with this curve here on the seam allowance because that seam allowance won't stretch enough to lie flat inside the garment. So you do always, on a curve, you always do need to snip to help that all lie flat. Because this um, seam is going to splay out when it's... Um, 
press through to the other side. All we need to do is to do some snips at right angles to the um, stitching line that we've just done and that will make sure that your fabric doesn't fray and then what we do is the, 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 the tighter the curve the closer together the snips are for the fabric. That one's probably not quite deep enough and again when you're making this for yourself at home just snip one pocket and don't snip the other and then try and get it to lie flat and have and compare it so you understand why you're why you're doing these things. So I'm just going to do a few more snips along here and then we're back onto the straight edge so I don't need to worry about the straight edges again. And when we turn this round, if I just demonstrate with this now, when we press those seam allowances out, look how much gap, if I can hold on to it and show you, Look how those edges splay out. Can you see as it starts to lie flat? They, they've got gaps in between those little snip lines and that's because they've got to spread out in order to accommodate that curve on that pocket edge. And when we press the, these pockets, that will do the same thing again. So can you see how they're snipping out, they're, they're splaying out? And that's what we're doing. We're releasing the fabric on that seam allowance so that it'll allow it to do that. Now we've got this one ready. We can just put our fingers inside it. You can press it to press it flat first. Perhaps we ought to do that. Let me just do that because that is good practice to get into doing your seams like that. Just plug my little mini iron in and get my wool pressing mat. So let's just press this one first while this one just lines up. So when you press while you're, when you've just done your stitches flat, you set these stitches into the fabric and it just gives it an easier turn around. The other thing that we can do is something else as well. So we can press like this just to get this going. My iron's not quite hot enough, but it will be shortly. And then what we can also do is on these edges here is we can go down the seam allowance and just press these edges in already. So just get the nose of your iron and just start to press that seam allowance in. Because this will help you when you're turning it just to make it those edges really nice and crisp and give you a really good finish. And there we can see on the corner look where we've ironed it, we've not got too much bulk in the corner, which is great. And again, we can start and iron this now with all of those bits going back. So we are still working on the inside of the pocket. I've not gone crazy. I know it's the inside of the pocket. So there we go. And they, there you can see, look, can't you, how they've all spread out when we've ironed them. And then we're going to go on the other side now, put the, the lining side down, make sure those seams are tucked underneath for you so you're kind of pressing them away. And we're almost giving them a bit of memory, really, um, ironing memory, in order for when we then go and turn it round. So that's all in there. A little extra step, but sometimes these little extra steps do just make it easier for us. If you have problems with this, maybe your fingers don't work or you don't want to burn yourself, you can always use your awl, your pointy tool, and use that to press the fabric back. Oops, if it'll go. Getting stuck on my wall pressing mat. Or hold your fabric down so that you can then press it over. Look, that's the other thing that you can do is hold the fabric down so that again, as you press up and in, into it, you can get those turned up. Let's get these other bits done. I'm making that look a little bit clumsy, but you'll get the idea. Okay, so once we've done that, now we can then turn this through the right way round. And I've left it open here and open at the side there because they're going to get turned into the seams. Careful not to stretch this too much out of shape because we don't want it to be too, too um, out of shape. And then we're just going to help this through. Sometimes you have a knitting needle or a turning tool, but I think with the shape of this, we should be able to just pull it through with our fingers. At least these are a bit bigger than the, the smaller lunar clothes, aren't they? We can accommodate these a little bit a little bit easier and these clothes are a perfect stepping point between sewing the clothes for a child as well so just bear that in mind as well because you know I'm always looking for ways to use your skills on 
other things and other garments as well. So just put your finger inside and just run your fingernail across that seam edge. We've got a nice clear line where the difference between the lining and the fabric is on this garment, but you might not have if you're using um, your main fabric for lining, which you could do. We want that seam line there to be right on the very edge. So just roll it out as you can against your pressing mat or pressing surface. And then once you're happy, you don't really want to be seeing any lining if we can help it, we can just press that into place. And again, if you're worried about your fabric or if you're using a wool fabric, then make sure you're using a pressing cloth as well. This one's a silk organza pressing cloth. So if you've got one of those, you can put that over and that just absorbs the heat out of the iron um, so it doesn't damage your fabric. And again, just at the side here, just make sure we're pulling all of that out so we get a lovely, lovely shape to our pockets. Just give that a press and turn it over the other side. We can give it a press as well. Got a bit of thread in there. Oops, stay still pocket. Right, there we go. And then the other thing that I've noticed is that I've got a rounded corner on my pocket just here. So I'm going to just use a little pin and just pop it into there and then I can just ease those fibres out nice and gently just to give me a lovely point on the bottom of that pocket and then I'll just press that into place again just to make sure that's got the lovely point that's intended just be careful you don't pull any fibres out as you're doing that okay there's a lovely crisp pocket all sewn and all ready to be put onto our skirt. Excuse my threads on the end here. I'm just going to go and do the other one and if you do the same and then we'll come back because we'll do a little bit of top stitching on this edge just here first and then and um, around the bottom here just to attach that onto the skirt before we then can sew these into the seams here and here. So do your other pocket and come back to me and then we'll be on to sewing that onto the skirt piece. Okay so then I want you to get your front pinafore um, skirt and we've got our two pockets and our front pinafore has been cut on the fold there's no um there's I do want you to mark before you open it out just do a little snip on your waist seam just to give you a little snip for that halfway point on the waist there because we will need that when we're actually attaching this and gathering it to our garments then open out our fabric and then you, this is going to be difficult for you to see because pattern on pattern isn't very easy to see. So I'll put my hand underneath it. But we're then going to take these pockets and we're going to offer them up to the corners. Let me just turn, the, let me use this one on this side so you can kind of see it. What we're going to be doing, so I'm not going to sew it this way around. This is just to show you, is you're going to put the top seam of the pocket against the top and the side edge against the pocket against the side like that. And that is your placement, okay? So for us, we're going to be putting this the right ways round. So we're going to then line up the top of the skirt pocket with the top of the skirt and then the bottom of the skirt, the edge of the pocket is going to go against the edge of the skirt here. Let's put some pins in to hold that in place. And when I'm pinning on pockets, I pin into the corner like this so that we get really close and it holds it nice and still for me so that we can hold it really close in there. So this is the edge of my pocket. Let me put my seam gauge underneath so you can see. So there's our pocket there and along there. And I've got a pin going from there right into that very corner. I'm going to hold, don't need to, oh no, before we do that, before we do that, we're gonna do one other thing as well. Hold on a second. It isn't on the instructions, but we are going to do it. Corrections, you see, I want to improve things. So I want to make this nice crisp edge. So we're actually going to stitch that edge down and just put a little row of, of top stitching along there. So let's get to here. So we're going to do exactly the same thing again. We're going to put the, the fabric into our machine and we're just going to sew about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. So again, you can use your um, needle position to make sure that that's right across. And we're going to make our stitch length as well from the 2.2 that mine was I'm going to go up to a 3 for top stitching so start stitching and reverse and then we're going to do exactly the same again we're going to start and turn around this corner 
and then when it won't do any more we're going to put our needle in our work and do that pivot where we lift up the presser foot and turn our fabric a couple of stitches and you'll need to do less stitches than you were on the other curve because your stitch length is bigger and then we're going to then go up here this is optional you don't have to do this but again it just makes it really nice So this now has got a top stitching line all the way around here now hopefully you can you might just be able to make it out but that's going to make sure that that sits sort of let's put it on that side and you'll be able to see look going to hold that really nice and flat for us so i'm going to do that on the other side and then what we're going to do then is just make sure that your see i've got a little overlap of lining there i'm just going to take that back to the same level as my pocket edge on that one so that's nice and neat don't put your bits on your fabric like I just have done. Um, and then we're going to go up to the top of the pocket and then we're going to line it up with the top and line it up with the side now that we've got that top stitching on and that'll hold that all nice. And then we're going to pin this in place, making sure that if you have used a different colour lining, you don't see your lining poke through because the idea is that the lining isn't visible. Okay, and we're going to then go ahead and we're going to top stitch this in place but only on the square corner so we're not going to top stitch this bit down because we need to be for bramble to be able to put their their hands inside their pockets it wants to be a working pocket so if we just put our pins along the square edge that's where we need to go and then what we're going to do then is we're going to move our needle well we can keep no we can keep our needle there actually but i want it to be closer to the edge so you want to be quite really really quite close onto this edge because if you're not your lining fabric will be visible and we want that to be be kept towards the back so you're going to almost go in an eighth of an inch away from the edge i'm still on a top stitch three length so a couple of stitches forward a couple of stitches back and then when i get back to my starting position i'm going to put my needle in my work so i can go nice and steady if you've got a um, speed gauge take that down as well and then you're going to then just follow nice and carefully and slowly on the edge we always take it slow when we are top stitching because it's better to go slow and not have to unpick it or correct it than it is to go fast and then it all look all wobbly take a break if you need to with your needle in your work so it can't move and then here we go down to the bottom and we'll do that same pivot at the bottom here so we're getting down towards the bottom, so get ready to move your pin out of the way. Maybe one more stitch. And then we're going to needle in our work, lift up our presser foot, and now we can turn it all nice and neatly without it jumping out at us. And now, taking our time, we can now sew across to this edge just here. And then reverse stitch on the edge just there. Needle out of the work. This pin here, you can see I moved it to do the corner, but it stayed in, but that's fine. I didn't sew over it. And then we just take off our starting and our ending threads. And so what you'll end up with is your pocket attached onto the corner of your skirt, like this. We've got the top stitching there for the opening. And then down this edge here, we've got our lovely stitching down to a point here. And you can see a little bit of the lining, but not so much that it's a problem. And because we've got it in a coordinating colour, it doesn't, doesn't bother me at all. The next thing we're going to do now is just go to the sewing machine and just run a single row of stitching, just tacking down this top bit here. Because you can see how it can flap around when we're attaching the skirt. We don't want it to get sewn like that by accident. So we're going to just put a few stitches across the top here. You can tack it by hand if you want to, but I'll just do it by machine. And again, just down the side here, and that'll just make sure that those edges don't fold out of the way when we need them to be lying nice and flat. Once I've done that, I'm going to be top stitching the edge. Where's my other pocket gun? Here it is. I'm going to top stitch the edge of here first, then I'm going to place it onto my skirt and then I'm going to stitch all the way around before then I just tack it top and bottom. So you're just copying exactly what we've already done. But if I put my hand in there, you can see we've got a lovely pocket there forming and you can see the lining there. 
Okay, back to you in a minute. So on here, you're going to see just a whole load of fabric, but I don't know if you can make out, but we've got two pockets just sewn in just there on the top corners there that we've got in the edge. So there's the corners of our fabric and the curved edge. And we've got the top stitching on the top edge there, and we've got the top stitching into the corners on both sides there. So they're all looking lovely and neat. And we've got a little notch in the centre front of our skirt as well. The next thing we're going to do then is do some gathering stitches. You can change your threads over to a contrast if you want. Um, maybe that would be a good idea, wouldn't it? Because then you'll be able to see what I'm doing better. So let me just, um, I'll pause the video while I just change this thread over. Hold on. So we're going to do some gathering stitches now across the top of this, which is what's going to bunch it up for going inside the bib. But what I've actually done is I have changed my thread over to this bright red so that you'll be able to see the gathering stitches. Um, and I'll sew it on the inside so you can see as well. But you can use the same colour thread as you've already been using if you wish to, or you can change it over. And what we're going to do is we're going to do two rows of stitching, one about an eighth of an inch in from the edge and then the other about a centimetre away from it. So you want to have like a channel of um, that's going to be created by these two rows of parallel threads. Let me show you what I mean. So let's just sew this first line first and I'm also going to reduce my tension. So I've gone from a five and a half down to a number two on my tension and I've put my stitch length up from my three which I was on for my top stitching up to number five because this fabric is thicker if you want them to be finer gathers then just take it up to a four um, for your stitch length but that just depends on what you want to do then we're going to start on the edge and we're just going to show so one row of stitches all the way along this edge here no reversing and you've got to leave a tail at the end as well so I'm going through the top of the pockets as well and through to the other end, nice and straight. Leave a tail and cut your thread. So if you've got a machine that cuts your threads for you, you might want to switch it off just for that bit. And then we're going to now go again and we're going to do another row of stitching threads just a little bit further down. So I'm using the edge of my presser foot and the original stitching line just to give me a line to work to. And this is the same if you're gathering any clothes that took up at all. This is the best way of doing it, that I found anyway. Gives you lovely neat gathers. And then we're going to cut those threads. So on here now, you can see that we've got these rows of threads just here. So the idea is then that you can take the bobbin thread, which in this case will be on the right side of my fabric, but wherever your bobbin thread is, because those ones are... Um, supposed to gather a bit easier and if you need to just separate out your thread so that you've got your two threads for the bobbin together so if you can see on the edge there I've got my two threads for my bobbin and my two threads for my top thread so top threads and bobbin threads let go of your top threads and just hold on to your bobbin threads and then what you can do then is just pull along with the threads and if you pinch the fabric with your finger and your thumb, when you're holding onto your bobbin threads, then you'll start to see gathers start to form. The tension is on the bobbin thread and you can start and pull those gathers in towards the centre and that will start and gather your fabric up. If you go too far, don't worry, just pull those gathers out towards the edge and you can ease those gathers back down again. So it's very versatile um, and as long as you've got long enough threads here, these first stitches shouldn't come undone, so that's nice and easy. The other thing we'll do is do it from the other side as well, so we'll gather from the two edges into the middle. So I sometimes just need to have something just to separate out those threads because I've got fat fingers. So I've separated out my bobbin threads and my um, top threads. I'm holding on to my bobbin threads again, and then with my finger and my thumb, I'm now going to pull those threads down the, the fabric along the threads and it just tightens it up and it just bunches it all up for you so that we start to get this this edges now gathered and reduced so if we look at the difference between the hem 
and this you can see where these gathers are starting to form and you can see that they're quite nice and delicate even though we've got a size 5 stitch on there those gathers are going to be nice and delicate you won't gather up so easily over your pocket um, where your pocket is stone which is my section there because that fabric is thicker but certainly where there's no pocket you can see that they're gathering up very nicely the first thing I want you to do though before we do that is we're going to just press up the hem so let me just have a quick look and see how, what the size hem that we need is because I think that it's easier to do the hem whilst it's um, flat. In step 12, overlock or, zig overlock or zigzag the finish of the hem and turn up four centimetres to the wrong side so in place. So we've got a four centimetre hem. So whilst you've got this flat and before we've got all of these gathers in place, we're just going to give this hem some memory and we're just going to measure that and press that up. So get your pressing surface. And even before I zigzag mine, I'm going to set my seam gauge at four centimetres, which is just over one and a half inches. And then I am then going to press that over. You can use your pressing cloth as well if you're worried about damaging your fabric. But I do find that it is easier to press up larger pieces of fabric like hems and things like that whilst it's in the flat and before it's all been gathered up. Now this pinafore dress doesn't have that many gathers, but certainly on the, the twirling skirt, Daisy's twirling dress, um, and on the meadow sweet dress that I just made, I did find it a lot easier to press this up before we start actually doing the rest of the construction. We're not going to need to knit just yet. We'll need to knit in a minute or two when we get on to another section, but we'll we'll just get it pressed until it just gives it a bit of a crease in the fabric, a deliberate crease in the fabric and holds that in place. So if I show you that now, that's our crease. And can you see there, there's a, a nice deliberate crease all the way down that fabric now that we can use. And when we join our front and back together, that will have that memory and it'll make it easier to work with. So let's ju we've just folded that up, that's fine. Let me just go back now and I'll do that on the other piece as well. So the next thing that we're going to do now, we're going to put this to one side because we're now going to be working on our bib, which is here. So what we're going to do with our bib is we're going to turn this around. Let me just get rid of my pressing max. I don't need that at the second at the moment. And we are going to turn this around now so that we've got the right sides together. Just if you've got tufts from your tailor's tack, just push those into the centre of your garment just so they're away from your seam allowances and then that'll keep those out of the way for you. We're going to put these two pieces of fabric right sides together. And we are only going to sew along this curved edge, the top edge at the centre front and the curved edge at the bottom. We have got notches to match. So you've got a notch centre front on the lining and a notch centre front on your pinafore so we can match that up and the same on the top edge as well so match those up first as your match point and put a pin in to hold those together then I'm going to pin to my corners to hold those nice and steady I'm going to pin at the edges as well just here just to hold those still but we're not going to be sewing down these short edges and then just put another pin in just to hold that steady on that curve as well, just to, well, however many pins you need, but that's roughly how many I'm going to have just to make sure that that's kind of all holding together. And then we're going to start here. Oh, one's come out. Start at one side edge here. We're going to sew around here, up to the point here, pivot. So we're going to do that pivoting while we go around the corner. To the edge here, stop. Across to the top, stop and then down here which is the other side of the bib. We are not going down these short edges and we're not going along this centre front here because we need to do something else first. So let's do that. So we need to change our threads over. So let me do that. I'm going to change that over to my stitching thread and then I'll come back to you. So let's line the edge here now up with our edge of our press foot. I've got to put my stitches back so I've got to reset my machine back down. So my stitch length is going to go back down to 2.2 length, which is my construction. Some machines are automatically set at 2.5. That's fine as well. I'm going to move my needle as well across 
move it to the 6.5 position to give me the quarter of an inch against my pressure presser foot but again I can check it just with my seam gauge just going in just to make sure that's the right length and then I've got my um, tension has gone from the two that we were doing for the gathering stitches and I've taken that back up again now and that's gone back up to a um, five and a half so we've got this first pin in here. So we'll take that out now. We've got our fabric underneath. We're going to hold on to our threads a couple of stitches forward and a couple of stitches back. And then we're going to put our needle into our work so that we're ready to start, start going. So we're going to go up here around. So we're going to have to do some pivoting. So let's start sewing straight until we start to get onto the steepness of the curve, which is about there for me. And then I'm going to just lift up my press foot slightly, a couple of stitches round. So we're doing exactly the same as we did for around the edge of those pockets. That was really good practice for us. Pins out so we don't go over our pins. And try not to get too close to your seam. To your seam edge, keep that quarter of an inch if you can. And if you, if you go over it on one side, you need to make sure you mirror it on the other because this is going to be um, mirrored, isn't it? So we need to make sure that's right. Where's my oar for a second? under here oops oh, i'm pushing it away from me so i'm going to use my awl just to put those tailors tack threads out of the way so where i'm going up here so i don't sew over them right so the orange pin is getting in the way now so i'll take that out and then up to the point here then i'm going to put my needle in my work and then i can lift my presser foot and i can pivot to go across the top here as you get to them nearly at the edge put some more stitch and then we're going to then pivot down here so you can start to curve it but then as soon as you start to feel any tension you then have to just do your couple of stitches just as, just as you're starting to change direction so I'm on a pin let's take that out before we get in the way straight out to the edge and reverse at the edge so we have reversed at the start and the start just to hold those edges together and then we're just going to take our threads off start and end always always get used to taking your threads off so again we can see i've started here round the curve pivoted at the top here across the top nice and straight and then down to the edge here and then across to this side here so again exactly the same as on the pockets we've got a curved edge so we know we need to snip so let's snip through and up to, but not through, that stitching line. So we're just a couple of threads away, look, from that stitch line. The, the tighter the curve, the more closer together your snips need to be. And if it won't lie flat, just go back and redo it. And then on these corners again, we're going to take these off just slightly wider than 45 degrees. Okay, so we're just doing that on all of these make those lie nice and flat and then snipping down here and then we'll press it flat first you can press those seams open if you want to or you can just turn it straight round and we're going to turn it round to the right way round so we've got the right side out okay where's my pressing mat that's the next thing let's give it a press just press those stitches in place first and then we can come around the edge here if we want to and just start to see the, the corduroy holds onto my lining fabric so it doesn't want to give it up very easily but you might have a more forgiving fabric that will do that for you so you'll be fine with yours just move it with my fingers first Across the top as well we can just fold that down give that a nice edge and then again on the other side and then I'm going to do the same with the um, corduroy just to make sure that that is all lying nicely 
and then I'm going to then turn it round to the right side and then using my pressing cloth I'm just going to press that so that it's nice and flat. And we'll see if Sarah top stitches it before she does anything else, we'll check that. So on small things like this, they're quite fiddly. We can't use the technique called understitching because they're just they're just too fiddly. But otherwise, if this was an, on an adult garment or a child's garment, you know, full size, then I then I would be understitching these arm corners. And if you're not sure what understitching is, you can, there is one of my skill builder videos that will tell you what that is. Okay, I'll come back to you when I've done this. So to turn it out, just put your fingers in, fingers into the corners and just push those out nice and easily. And then you're just going to curve your pieces around just so that you can get those to sit nice and flat. And if you need to, again, with a pin, just use that just to help edge ease those out onto the edge of the fabric. Or you can sometimes just roll it through your fingers and that will also help. If you've got a wool pressing mat, the other thing that somebody didn't realise the other day is you can actually anchor your bits down. So say I've done that edge, I can put a pin in and I can anchor that fabric then and that corner down onto my pressing mat with a pin. Let me just pull out this corner for a second. So once those two are done, I can anchor that into my pressing mat and then that just allows me just to work down into these corners and just to hold it hold it flat where I want it to be. So that can be a bit of an advantage that you can use for doing that. If you've got an ordinary ironing board, you can do the same thing as well. And then we can then just press in between the pins without using our pressing cloth so we can see where we're going. And that will then just hold those edges down for us. And just make sure, and because these are glass head pins, you can iron over the top of those. Then we can take the pins out, make sure you don't burn yourself because they will get hot under the iron. And then we can turn it over and then using our pressing cloth again over the top. I need to make myself a new pressing cloth, don't I really? This one's just an off cut that I've got that I've just overlocked. Okay. So we can see our tailor's tacks are still there right on the edge for doing our buttonholes for later. And we've got a lovely shaped bib here. So the next thing we're going to do is attach this to the skirt. Before we attach it to the skirt, I am going to top stitch this again. Am I going to top stitch it? I am, but I'm not going to start right at the edges because we need to be able to open this out. So I'm going to start about half an inch in from the edges. And I'll do that invisible start and stop bit that I've done before. So I'm going to leave my tails on my threads and I'm going to start, take my stitch length up to a three for a top stitch. And I'm going to just about an eighth of an inch away from the edge, put a needle in the work and then just pivot around this corner. It's just going to hold everything all together nicely for us and just give us a really lovely crisp finish. Again, this is extra to what's in the instructions. But Sarah does say in the beginning of the book that she has left out some instructions just for brevity because she assumes that you are already able to sew. So needle in the work and then let me just do I need one more stitch. And then, yeah, that should be enough. And then straight across the top here. Maybe one more stitch. And then we're going to then go down here and around the edge. Again, if you've got a nice um, plain fabric, this top stitching is really going to stand out. So if you think like jeans or like a denim pinafore dress, something like that, which again might be a fabric you're using for yours, if you, you can use a lovely um, contrast thread and then this will look really lovely. So again, I'm going to stop about an inch away from the edge, but I'm not going to um, knot my fabric. Um, reverse my stitches so that the stitching looks really nice and neat. So you can see on the edge there, I've not reversed and I've not reversed here. And then what we do is we get a um, hand sewing needle. And on this case, because we can get inside, I'm going to pull this two sides of the stitching apart and I'm going to hook my needle, the top, just not the point, but the head of my needle underneath that top stitch. And what you're looking to get is to get 
these two loops. So you need a loop from the top thread and a loop from the bottom thread. And then you can put your needle through those two loops and pull the fat threads through. And what you'll find is that you've got a lovely, neat, flat finish there and on the front. And you've got your threads through to the inside. And then what I do then is I just knot these three times. And by not going right up to the edge with that top stitching, we've neatened all of that edge and made it lovely and flat and leave about, oops, leave about a centimetre and a half, two centimetre thread because that's going to be stay inside, that's going to be tucked inside, so that's all fine. But you've, you've secured those ends without back stitching, so there's no bulky back stitching on there. And again here, go into the inside, needle, hook it under your threads and then pull those through. Make sure you've got two loops. So I've got two loops again here and then needle through the loop and just pull or oh, let go of one look and then pull the other one through. And it's lovely and neat on both sides. And then we knock those, those threads off. But yeah, but as I say, by not going right up to the edges, we've not um, going to impede our ability to sew this bib onto the back again another little step that we're adding in but i think it's uh it's a good one oops can't do thread do my threads and again just, just make that top not nice and tight a couple of centimeters on your threads and then we've just got that top front bib just all nicely sewn so that just keeps the lining and the fabric just nice together okay back to where we were attaching it to the skirt so what we're going to do now is we are going to take our thing. The first thing I'm going to look for is the center of our bib. And we are going to find the center point with the notch that we did on the center of the bib and match that to the center point on the notch of the skirt. This is going to make sure that we get nice even gathers. And I put a pin in over, the, I put it over the top of my, and I'm going to gather it from the inside, not from the bib side, but we're just seeing where that is. So you want your pin to go through on your gathered side. Then go to the edge here and keeping your threads for your gathering out of the way, you're going to match up the outside edge seam of your bib. So this is just the front bib. We've got the, the, um, the lining part of the bib taken out of the way. And again down to this side here so we've just got the two edges and the center point of the bib oh, going on the wrong side aren't i after i told you hold on a second let me just move this pin around so here's our bib here and there's the lining of our bib so that's the right sides out and top stitched and then we're just folding that bib lining out of the way and we're just working with the right side of our bib front and that's just gone onto the edge. So centre point and the two edges. Then turn it round to face you. Find your longest threads, which will be your bobbin threads. And now we're going to gather this up, the skirt up, by taking the gathers all the way into the middle of the skirt, gradually up to that centre pin, until both pieces of fabric are the same length. Can you see that? So we've gone from this look, where the skirt is a lot longer, than the bib front to this by gathering those threads up where they all sit together. So we've got that one right, so let's just leave that one for a minute. We can let go without it all undoing. Go to your other side, grab your bobbin threads, and then with your finger and your thumb, just gonna move those gathers and that thread, those threads all the way along, again, until you get to the same length as your fabric just be careful if your fabric's got stretching that you're not stretching it right out of shape once you've got to the right length what we can do is use those threads and then without going over the edge or without picking up the edge if you like we can just do a figure of eight around those pins and that will just with our threads it will just anchor down those gathering threads for the moment because then what we can do is use our fingernails or you can use something like an awl and you can just manipulate your th your gathers so that they look lovely and neat. It's very common to get a bald patch or a flat patch where your centre pin is, so make sure you get those nice. And as I say, the the pleats over your the gathers over your pocket will be stiffer, so that won't gather so much. 
Yeah, so once you've got that, then let's put a couple of more pins in just to hold this in place. And we're pinning the bib to the gathered skirt. And I've kept some of my gathers away from my edge, my um, the edge here, because that's where we're going to be having a seam allowance down the side here to join the front and the back together of the skirt. So I want to make sure that that's um, got plenty of room. Let's go back over to the other side now. We can just even out these pleats as well to make and gathers to make sure they're all nice. Once I'm happy with the amount of gathers, I'm just going to carefully put that thread around, round the, loop it round the top and then round the point, round the top and then over the point. So you cross over in the centre there and that figure of eight will just hold on to those threads for you to make sure that they don't start on gathering. And then we're going to start and just pin along this edge to make sure that this is all lovely and neat. Gathering's a really important skill, and once you've once you've cracked it, you've got it. But and it, and it is fairly straightforward. Um, but that you just just with those techniques, it just helps. So if we turn over to this side, there's no puckers at all in the bib top. It's a little bit gathered because it's got the thickness of the gathers against it. The linings folded out of the way and in actual fact I am going to put a pin to hold that lining back against my bib just there just to hold it we're not going to stitch it but it should just hold it out of the way for me so that it can't flick and get in the way of my stitching and then what we're going to do then is take this to the seam and um, to the um, sewing machine and we're going to stitch along this edge here and we're going to use a one centimetre seam allowance. So it should take us right in the middle of or in between these two rows of, sti of gathering stitches that I've done. But once I get my machine lined up, I'll take this first pin out and I will pull out the figure of eight stitches. So I don't actually sew that figure of eight into the fabric. It's just holding it until we can get it to the sewing machine. The other thing you can do is if you just lift back your bib gently, you can have a look at your gathers and make sure that you're happy that they're nice and neat as well before you stitch it. Don't go, don't go yanking your fabric up because you will affect these gathers and we don't we want them to sit nice and straight but as you can see we've got a nice set of gathers between the pockets it goes flatter on the actual pockets and then I'm flatter at the side seam so most of my gatherings all in this center part and I'm happy with that so then once we're ready we can just put that bib back down again make sure everything's all okay and we're happy with that get hold of your sewing machine Take your stitch length to the 2.2 that you need for a construction stitch and make sure you're happy with where you know your seam allowance is going to be. And we're going to offer this straight up to the sewing machine and I'll take the red, my pin out and I'm just going to pull those threads back for me so that they're out of the way so that they're not going to be um, stitched in. Pull that one over the top there actually, that'll make it easier and then offer that up to the sewing machine and I'm going to make sure that I am sewing with a one centimeter seam allowance. So hold on one second, take my machine back to 3.5 and that should be fine. Okay, so a couple of stitches forward, a couple of stitches back, just to hold that edge in and then needle in our work. Okay, and so now we're, we're hands, once the needle's holding the fabric down, we're hands free. So I'm coming up to another pin, so let's take that one out. And you're just making sure that your gathers are always straight across so that they're, they're lying flat. You don't want your gathers to be folding back up like this or underneath your needle. You want to be having those flat. And I'm going to use the edge of my presser foot as my edge. So holding that all nice and steady. Coming up to another pin. So needling my work, take my pin out. And your gathers should stay straight. If you see anything that's not quite lying right or you want to adjust, just use your fingernail and just you know, adjust those into place. And do a little bit more. Stop before you pin, which don't say over a pin if you can help it. And that's why I've got all of my pins with the head sticking out this side here, so I can see them because they do get hidden in your, ga in your gathers if you're not careful. Pin out. Coming 
up towards the edge here in that other figure of eight. So I'm going to sew until I get almost onto it. And then I'm going to take my pin out. And then I'm going to pull on my gathering threads so they unravel and are out of the way. And then I'm going to now sew off the edge and then reverse just to make sure that that's nice and secured at that edge. Needle out of our work and then just cut our threads. Just move the machine. And this is what we've got. So you can see the stitch line in the middle of my gathering threads there by using the contrast colour of the gathering stitches. And on this side, we've just got a nice even seam going all the way along there. So that's all the way along here. So we can take our pin out of our lining fabric now because we're not, we're not at risk of sewing that in. If you have sewn anything in, just identify which portion or you've got a pucker in this side because you don't want to pucker in your body in this bib at all. Just cut out, cut out or, or undo a few stitches either side of it, flatten it out and then put it back in your machine and just go over that just to close it again. That's all you need to do. Don't panic. It's not a disaster. And then we can see on here we've got the row of stitches into the skirt look. And the only time I wouldn't put a row of stitches into the skirt is if I was working perhaps on a silk or on a satin, because when you're working with a silk or a satin, your needle will leave a mark in a hole in your fabric um, and that might not recover. So in that case, then you'd have a couple of rows much closer together and you'd almost have one straight on your stitch line rather than going into your actual um, fabric as you can see on the red one here we've got that going into the skirt look um, but once you've done that then what you can do is get hold of your bobbin threads again and you're going to separate out so you've just got one bobbin thread and then you're going to just pull on that now and you're going to pull it all the way through to the other side so we're going to take it out because we've finished with that gathering now so pull on that thread and that will go all the way through and I've got a nice long piece of red thread there and then if you use your fingernail, you'll just unloosen the top, the um, other thread, and that will just pull away nice and neatly as well. I'll take that to one side. So then we go to the other thread, which is the other bottom one. And then we do the same, pull on that again, and that will pull all out. That's why we loosen our tension off so that it will come out easily. And then you can pull on the other thread, and that will take out two. If when you take your threads out, because you can see there's a few little holes just here that are just through the fibres, if on the right side you can still see that, you can try steaming it, or if it still won't work, just wet it. Wet it with some water and then steam it dry again and that'll just get all those fibres to bunch up again and those holes should then disappear. A little fray thread just there. But there we've got a lovely gathered and sewn on pinafore skirt there with lovely even gathers. So the next step, step then is to do our side seams apparently. So let's um, get ourselves all set up and get rid of my threads and we'll do the side seams. <laughs> 